Hello everyone, welcome to the Darkest Range Review. This time we'll be looking at the 12th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Real Steel. And just as the title suggests, this is indeed an episode about steel. For you see, our robot ranger is having some arguments with Nate, mainly about him wanting to mess around and play so much, you know, go out there and explore the world, see what it's like to have a human life, while well, Nate prefers to stay inside the lab. And unfortunately, during one of these playful escapades, Steel messes up inflating a basketball and nearly breaks some stuff. To which Nate just gets really serious and tells him that if it happens again, he will not be welcome there. I mean, Steel did ask Nate if he wanted to go play basketball, but Nate declined so Devin went and taught him how to play off screen. However, that is the least of our worries right now because Blaze shows up. Yeah, he's finally getting some action after getting pushed aside last episode. <laughs> But he appears to be alone, and he's given a speech to the rangers how he could destroy them now, but he wants to have some more fun. And he keeps talking and talking. Because really, behind the rangers, they have a new Robotron called Clonetron, who is based off a copier machine. And he scans Nate's body. Of course, as soon as he's finished that, the rangers notice. So, Blaze has a bunch of Tronics fight the rangers. And the rangers don't really get a chance to morph, because it's a sudden attack. And Blaze especially goes after Devin, which I thought was a nice touch because the human Blaze really had it out for Devin. So you can tell he's just attacking fiercely and intensely. So part of that rivalry definitely carried over to the Avatar Blaze. So Steel runs past Nate, who is struggling to fight off the Tronics on his own, and goes to help Devin out. Steel then tries to blast Nate's enemies, however he can't get a clear shot because of all the moving around. And then right as he's pulling the trigger, Clonetron bumps into him, and his blast hits off Mark. It separates Nate from the Tronics, but it also barely misses hitting him. Steel tries to tell him that was an accident because of the battle, but Nate is still in a bad mood and not hearing it. So Devin just has them all go back to base. Now Grid Battle Force, understandably, Commander Shaw is very disappointed in the two brother rangers, as they should be because they screwed up big time with their bickering and let the monster get away. Pretty much tells them that they need to make up and be better after what happened. The apologies can't fix everything, but they're a good place to start, that's for sure. And Nate, still not in a good mood, has to be dismissed so that he can get some more parts for stuff he's working on. Now, Steel is very upset about it. I mean, the other rangers want him to play some more basketball, but he's just not into it. He has to go inside and talk to Nate. Unfortunately, this is Clonetron. He's taking on Nick's appearance. Did I just say Nick? I mean Nate. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I guess the names do sound similar. So when Steel talks to who he thinks is his brother, he says he's really sorry and to help make up for it, he cleaned up his entire lab for him. But the clone just fakes a little bit of enthusiasm, tries to get him to run off and do something, to which Steel volunteers to help bring in supplies from the incoming delivery car, which is being parked coincidentally right by where the rangers are playing basketball. So both appear together, and the real Nate does not want his help. He says he can carry the cases in himself, and just insists, so why don't you just go play some more basketball or something. He really does not want to deal with him. Man, Nate need to chill out. So further inside Grid Battle Force, Zoe confronts Nate about just what his problem is. Cause this real out of character for how much he wanted a brother, and then <laughs> look how he's acting now. Of course, Steel is just around the corner and is overhearing this unbeknownst to them. And Nate reveals the real reason why he's so angry is because that he never learned how to play any sports. His whole life was always spent inside the lab and you know inventing things like weapons and stuff with Morphex. And he and he believes that Steel thinks that he's boring to which Steel is surprised. So it's clear he doesn't believe that. So then what does he think? But then Steel notices go right by him is Clonetron Nate. And he's looking back and forth between the one Nate sneaking into different rooms and the other one is there talking with Zoe. So he knows something isn't right. So he follows the clone Nate who eventually finds the computer that control all the Zords. And he confronts him about it and tries to figure out what's going on. Of course it only takes an instant to figure out it's not really Nate because he's sort of trying to smash it with a hammer. Just an ordinary regular hammer. Not like um, Morphex Robotron Enhanced Hammer. Just a hammer that was lying around. <laughs> now Steel is not so clueless as he appears to be. He innocently looks at the security camera and tells the security team to send the alarm to the lab, send a ranger. 
And when he arrived, the two steels are fighting. Yes, there's two steels now because Clontron copied his form. So as usual when you have this type of scenario, the fake and the real one are arguing back and forth which one is real. But then the real steel, yeah, see what you did there, name of the episode, goes on his really nice heartfelt. He says that he always thought that Nate was perfect, he could do anything, and it never occurred to him that there was something he couldn't do. And that he admires how smart he is and how he can build anything. I mean, he made the weapons, the sword, he even made steel. I mean, steel really looks up to that. I mean, he wanted to explore more of the world, but he never understood that Nate was always so limited, even though to him he always appeared to be unlimited. I mean, it does mention that he ever heard him in a hall. The clone obviously didn't know about this, so bam, he gets forced out of there, onto the streets, and the battle ensues. And really, he is a pushover in combat. Well, not all the rangers fight him, because on the way out, he does blast the Zord computer. Which ain't good, because Blaze immediately orders the launch of a Giga Drone. So Nate and Steel work together as brothers, with Steel asking just to be told what to do, how to help, to help get things back online. It don't take long on screen time, though, because in a short scuffle, Devins is the first to be online. And even after getting the first hit in combat, it don't really help, because... The race of Zord gets copied, and a minute later when the other two Zords are up and running, they don't know which one to unite with to form the Megazord. Because apparently the copy Zord can also come in on the communications and make the same poses. And so Zoe gets a bright idea of just blasting them both with laser fire. And that dispels the illusion, so she immediately fires even more at the clone drone. <laughs> to knock him back just in time for them to form the Megazord and destroy it, using their regular hyperstrike finish. Now in this fancy Megazord rider kick that they did last time. <laughs> now in the aftermath, Nate's in his lab, just using wads of paper to try and do basketballish things by tossing into a trash can. Except this time, Steel insists that he comes join them and that he learn how to play basketball. So he reluctantly agrees to it, end up playing to which they're down by 20 points, but then Steel says he has a great idea for them to get ahead. So he passes the ball to Nate, and then Steel picks up Nate and tosses him in the hoop, which he gets stuck in for a moment and then like slides through along with the ball. And to them, being the first time they've ever done such a thing, especially Nate having going through that, that sort of exhilaration, because he hasn't really had any sort of intense battles as a ranger yet. They're just shouting and celebrating, even though the other rangers are like, yeah, they were down by 20 points, but let them have this moment. They kind of deserve this moment of fun. That's how it ends. No aftermath in the cyber dimension, nothing with Evox, Roxy, or Scrozzle. Not even the data chip that we are two episodes in dealing with. So did they gather any data? No, they didn't. So I guess we're just saving that for the next time when there's another opportunity. But man, Copytron, no not Copytron, Clonetron, gave the Rangers a lot of trouble. More so than most of the monsters that went directly against him in combat. And I like this sort of thing with Blade compared to Rox. I mean, he will make a scheme that will use the monster's unique abilities to stealth attack the Rangers. Whereas Roxy will come up with a plan where she does all the work and the monster just uses their ability to cause damage. Blaze is looking a lot more strategic this time than Roxy, since most of the time all she does is cause a distraction and never tries to do really anything super sneaky. Instead, she's mostly just played on Ranger's good name a little more. So I would like to see a lot more of Blaze because really, he's had hardly anything to do. Most of his appearances, it's just been him alongside Roxy. He hasn't gotten a whole lot of solo time. So we'll see what happens if they continue this data chip story in the next episode. I'm looking forward to it. One thing I've noticed that Zoe has been used as a mediator in a lot of situations lately. I mean she helped out Ben and Betty and she also helped out Nate and Steel. Now we really haven't seen much personality out of her outside of. She just wants to help as many people as she can. I mean yeah she did want it to save the the forest or something in an early episode way back before the mid-season break, but that just fits more of that point I'm making. We don't know much about her besides that. She wants to make a difference in people's lives. i like to see that explored a little bit more where it goes more in depth of her. I mean, hell, we've even had Ben and Betty get some more character development in the last episode, so she needs some too. I mean, it was a start last time, but I think we need to see a little bit more to have a be fully fleshed out. But overall, this is definitely a B-plus episode. You can't go wrong with it. It does offer a good mystery and a really nice moment with Steel Speech. Nothing to complain about. It's definitely very solid. And it keeps a lot more interesting things to talk about than the last episode. Which is a good thing because that means the upping the writing quality and the story element. 
And that's all I have to say about this one. I like this episode, and I hope the next one is just as good or even better. And we'll be checked out next time. Until then, this has been Jargus, and let the power protect you. It's more than time. For justice we fight with peace more than life.